Hey everybody, so I am going to be completely honest. So I just recorded a tutorial and I didn't like how it was going. I made this thing, it's fully UV cut and textured and everything and I don't know, I felt like the tutorial just, you know, it went well and all that, but I just didn't like the sword too much. I felt really just bored. <laughs> so I'm going to do this curvy one for the tutorial that I'm actually posting and I'm going to be walking people through and doing all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, I'm going to do the I'm going to do the curved sword um and we're going to texture it in Substance Painter in one tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this uh and what I did is I just brought the reference into a layer but I'm going to call this uh poopy sword and uh I'm going to just make sure that I hide it so it's not in my way. And I'm going to select the reference. I'm going to click the R button so I can get the reference. And in the front view, uh, I'm going to take a look at my origin, which is right here. And I'm going to move the reference so that I have the curv curved sword kind of like right down the middle there. And symmetry might not work so well in my case since I'm doing the uh, curved sword and there's not much symmetry going on like in this one if you notice it like you know this half could be duplicated over this half could be duplicated over if you wanted to but um this one seems to be a lot more unique and uh let me go ahead and shut off facebook because it's bo it's bothering me right now i'm gonna uh turn uh, on my second monitor so i have the reference next to me as well you want to be surrounded by reference when you're working just to keep in mind so for this in this case, I'm going to actually make the handle first, because um, I think that that sounds pretty suitable for now. Uh, I'm going to select all these faces here, and I'm going to delete them. So I just appended a cube, and now I'm just going to go ahead and in my front view, I'm going to select this, bring it up here, and start modeling. So first things first, I want to possibly rotate this like that. and. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and extrude outward here, grab this vertice and pull that in like this, and grab this and extrude that out as well. I'm going to select those and then um, I'm going to switch this to world space, so if I hit control shift and right click I can switch to world space, and now I'm just moving these uh, vertices so that they're completely straight according to my world space. Um, now I'm going to select this topology and just kind of clean it up a bit and then do one more extrusion here, um, like this, and then move that out. So we're just blocking things out right now. Um, do a mesh fill hole, many, uh, oops, nope, not, not what I wanted, sorry. A, um, bridge, right? So now we got these vertices, we're going to merge those just in case. Um, let's go ahead and do that there. So basically we're just establishing like the topology that we need. Uh, so now what we could do is, um, I want to select all these verts and make sure they're straight. They already were, but for some reason I thought they weren't. Uh, let's do ahead and let's go do a UV, uh, planer. So that just makes it so those cuts there that I had for some reason, they're gone. So now in, in my custom shop, I have the history, the freeze transforms, and the center pivot stored here. And if, you, if you're not familiar with my tutorials, I like to have people like dock these up here so that they can speed up their workflow. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and um, select this edge here and do a control E to extrude on that bad boy. And pull that down like that. Uh, and we're going to move it actually here to the left. And we're going to hit R and scale. Now what we can do is hit Control E again, hit uh, W, and we're going to scale that out like that. Hit G to repeat, pull down, G to repeat, pull out, but then this time we're going to scale in again like that. Okay. So now what we can do is we want to do a planer again. Planer just gets rid of those cuts like I said. And since this is an open object, the only thing that has a cut technically is this. So that's why it's glowing white. So delete history, freeze transform, center pivot. Now I'm going to take a look at my reference a little bit here. And 
figure out what else I could add to this thing. Maybe now I could go ahead and do a mesh smooth, right? And now what I want to do is do a control E to extrude and pull that out like that. Now I'm going to do another mesh smooth and notice it starts looking more like a handle. Uh, if this were a handle for a um, hobbit sword of some sort, you know? Oh yeah, and by the way, this is a reference from uh, a website I found of this guy who does concepts for The Hobbit. So I'm just recreating it in 3D. So something that would essentially be for, you know, whether it's a movie or a game or whatever. If someone gives you a concept, you know, you just recreate it based off of those concepts. So this is by Paul Tobin Art, and I can send you guys a link uh, when I post this bad boy. Uh, so now, as you can see, we have our um, object here we created. Now it has zero cuts on it because I did a planer. Um, when you do a planer and you're choosing the whole object as a planer on like the z-axis, it grabs the entire thing and it puts it in a, in a projection essentially but only in the z-axis. So if I pull up the um, the UV editor, see how it does it in the uh, along the z-axis? Um, there's no cuts on this. But if I wanted to add a cut, right, if I wanted to make my cut here and I wanted to cut that now if I look at my UV editor, now this is cut in half, like this, right? So now I can select both of those things, unfold them, and then now I could just go ahead and just throw that into my UV editor here for now. I'm not going to UV cut right now, I'm going to model first, but I'm just showing you, you know, what I would need to do. So now I'm going to go ahead and delete history, freeze transform, center pivot, and I'm going to get going on the blade. So now I'm going to append another cube, delete these faces, and we're gonna go ahead and start modeling the blade so now let's go ahead and hit R there we go and now we're gonna select this vertice and we're gonna bring that down and we're gonna select that vertice and this vertice and we're gonna move that out now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select that edge and we're gonna control E to extrude and we're gonna, gonna hit W there and uh, I want to make sure that I'm following something, right? So whether it's this line like this or it's this one like that, I want to follow something. So what I'm going to do first is follow this curvature, okay, uh, to the best of my ability. So I'm going to go like this. Now, it, it's cool because now I'm going to do Control-E again one more time and hit W. And then I can just move it like this. Right now I'm going to hit G and then W. G, W. G, W. So G repeats the last move, and W is just switching me from extrude mode, which when I hit G, it extrudes for me, right? Switching it from extrude mode to um, when I hit W, it does the move tool. So now I could just move that edge after I extrude it. See how it has the extrusion pointing that way? Now I could just hit W and then just move it wherever I want. Um, and G and then W... GW now would be a good time maybe to start rotating um, some edges right so something like this hit W again and then now we could do that right so now GW 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 and just keep going if I just scrolled in hit alt GW now we're going to go ahead and merge these vertices. So the way I do that is shift right click, merge vertices, merge vertices to center. And we're going to move that out. We're going to move this in like that. There we go. Now we could go ahead and do the same thing we did, except now we're just selecting edge, uh, vertices rather. And we're just selecting them and moving them like this. You see? Nothing crazy. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now we're just going to select that all the way through until we got something going on look at that there we go now what we could do is go to our custom shelf double click here and that's the uh, insert edge loop tool so now what we could do is switch that to one and then uh, minimize that and now what we can do is every time we add it it's gonna add it right in the middle of my sword um, regardless of where I click because it's going to do it as an um, uh, even distribution of edge loops from here to here. It's going to do it evenly right down the middle. 
So the reason I added that there is because I wanted to have that curvature go down a little. All right, that looks good. Wow, that's actually pretty good. Now what we can do is add an edge loop here, right? And fix the topo so that um, it matches my concept because it has um, a section here like this. Oops. And I don't want to get too crazy with the, the detail because this is mostly going to be uh, done in Substance Painter. The, this is, what I'm doing right now, believe it or not, is some texture work, which is happening in the modeling aspect, right? The reason I'm doing texture work is because I'm making sure that my topology matches the concept so that when I add this difference here in color and the difference in the blade and all that stuff, that could be done by selecting certain faces on my my UV space, right? So those faces that I select in my UV space is what's going to help me when I want to um, texture because then I could just select those faces individually and it'll just make it a lot easier for me. So I'm thinking about the texturing process as I'm modeling, which is not a bad thing. I'm also thinking about the UV cutting process while I'm, while I'm modeling um, by adding that edge loop there, right? I'm thinking about the modeling, I mean the UV process because I actually UV'd this as I was modeling. I was like, you know what, I should just do a planner and then cut it, unfold it, and get that over with, right? So now I'm going to select this thing and I'm going to move it back so that it, this is kind of like there. It has enough room for me to like say, okay, I need to have the thickness from be here from here to like there or something. You see what I'm saying? So now um, I got that curved uh, blade. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a planer real quick, get rid of those cuts, and I'm going to do a uh, object. I'm going to select that in object mode, and then I'm going to smooth it. Um, once I smooth it, though, I get this weird stuff going on. So I could just select all those vertices, and then now I could do a uh, merge vertices to center, and then do that right there. You see? So when I smooth it, I did it just so I can have some weight, it's a little bit more topology um, to give it that sharp look and right here you get some weirdness so that that's something you could fix as you're going there you go that's not too bad uh, now what we want to do is we want to select this actually let's fix it a little bit here Alright, now what we want to do is we want to select this in object mode, remember do the big three, history, freeze, transform, center, pivot, control E to extrude, pull that out, so that it's like, somewhere like there I believe would be a good idea. Uh, now what we want to do, and this is where it gets kind of tricky, but it's okay, it's part of the tediousness is being in the 3D modeling field, I guess, if you're like a 3D modeler for whatever you do. It's tedious, like it's not easy. People would say like, oh, you know, modeling, yeah, sure, sounds fun, sounds easy. It's not at all. It's actually extremely difficult and it takes years and years to practice and learn it. And I am not even close to a professional, like, I wouldn't say I'm not a professional because I, you know, I, I do this, I get paid to like teach people, you know, like how to do this, like, like, cause I'm a tutor at my school. So like, I'm not saying I'm not a professional, but I'm not nowhere, I'm nowhere near, like, the best modeler in the world, so it's like, it feels good knowing that there's a lot to learn, and I'm so thankful that I am able to learn, um, modeling for a living and, and project that, you know, to people online and to, to, you know, people at my school that come by for help, it's really a great feeling being able to be a 3D model order and, uh, make money from it so like if your goal is like okay i'm trying to make money doing 3d modeling it's not going to happen you know overnight it's not going to happen by even doing the sword that you're watching me do right now it's like i'm hitting g to repeat by the way and it's not like you're not gonna like what i'm saying is like this is just part of the grind that it takes to become a good modeler and like become efficient with topology and understand what is needed of you when you're doing modeling for any kind of 
job. Like, you don't want to just be a 3D prop artist for games, right? You want to be a 3D prop artist for games, but someone who can also do a character if he wanted to or she wanted to. Or someone who could do weapon designs and stuff and, like, do um, some sort of... uh, environment piece that you need to do or stylized stuff so what I'm doing is I'm making a bunch of tutorials and all kinds of art styles all kinds of things that I normally don't do just to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone and I'm doing this out of the the goodness of my heart whatever's left of it and like just getting better I'm just trying to get better like every day and the only way I see fit is to just do a bunch of modeling and a lot of trial and error, you know what I mean? Um, I think it's super important to just understand that right off the bat. Uh, that it's a competitive field and that there's a lot of people out there who can do things that I can't do, but it's it's a learning experience. I'm here to learn. Um, so that's why I encourage um, people to like watch tutorials and and get familiar with these tools because someone out there is trying to learn them but better and faster than you so that's why I like to be efficient I like to put the stuff here on my custom shelf I like to keep my topology clean I like to ask questions I like to make sure people are on the same page as me if not like why like what 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 could I do better um there's always always room for improvement and I think part of having room for improvement is having some thick skin and just like looking at your mistakes in a way that helps you get better so now I'm going to select this right here, and yeah, I know, I go I go on tangents, I go on little rants, but it's part of the fun. I think now what I'm going to do is isolate this, and I need to add some topology here, so that it loops all the way around, right? So now we're going to go ahead and do edge selection all the way around, and it stops here because there's like a point in here where um, these edges don't collide here so what I'm gonna do is select this um, those two edges and then I'm gonna delete them and I'm gonna do my multi cut tool and I'm gonna just kinda patch that up oops I don't know what happened there that was weird okay guess Maya likes to play dirty <sighs> let's see W and then we're gonna go ahead and move that oops There we go. So I'm just fixing up some topology there. Um, So now let's take a look now. See, it flows nicely all the way around, right? It goes even at the top, right? So now what I could do is add a cut there. um, And now what I could do is in my UV editor, if I select both, of those shells and now I could just hit unfold and now I got myself some blades right so remember this button here um, I have a link that I'm gonna add but it's essentially just finds a nice way to pack it into your UV space and if you don't like it you can manually do adjustments after the fact I just like to I like to do it just so I can have it on it it's kinda like a quick way to throw it on the table sorta but it did a pretty good job um, it did a good job so Let's, let's uncheckr that and now let's get rid of the isolation and let's go ahead and take a look at our reference here now let's um, do this here all right so now I'm hitting Q on my keyboard and I'm gonna go ahead and do a extrude face so then I'm gonna pull that out like that have some sort of thickness and then I'm gonna bevel these edges here the ones that I just extruded oops Um, bevel edge and then we're gonna add segments and then bevel this one and soften that one actually instead of beveling it Um, so yeah this is it I'm going to see if I could do something else here by selecting all these since they're looped around. I could probably just soften those also. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just soften this whole thing. Uh, 
now would be cool maybe to add um, some extrusions here also. So I might want to actually um, grab my multi-cut tool and do like, mm, I want to say like one here and then one here. And then now I could um, face mode, select that as a loop, and then do a control E and then pull outward like that. And then um, multi-cut. And then we want to select that center edge that we just added in there and then pull it out like that. And select this is a loop and this is a loop and this is the loop. Those edges and then just kind of do them together. Pull that inward. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Bye. See ya. Extrusion. Don't like it. Making up my mind. I don't like it. Alright, so there's this and then there's that. Um, I think we're looking pretty good. I think we could just go ahead and um, check out our UVs now. So let's select both of those. And Okay, so as you can see, some things went wrong here when I was uh, messing around like a dummy. With uh, the extruding and the such. Um, it looks good in the modeling side of things, but not in the UV cutting side of things, right? So what we need to do is reproject it, planar, and then recut it. Right? So now that allows us to um, recut it. And um, go ahead and unfold. And uh, select both of the shells and hit that button there. It'll just kind of put them in a position where those checkers would be facing nicely, even up here. So that's a good one to use. I did say I was going to give it to you guys. So um, Now, I'm selecting this and I'm selecting that. And I'm going to go ahead and select both of these now. And let's try out that code. I don't know if it's going to work so well, but oh, it actually might. Um, yeah. There we go. Wow, that code's really nice. Uh, I might even say, like, this could be bigger. Like, I might want to take up a lot of UV space just because there's nothing really else in the concept that I have to add. There's, like, there's no, like, rope or anything else. So the texture has to be really, uh, they have to be really good. They have to be optimized. There we go. We are all set and ready to go. So now... Q on my keyboard, selecting both of these. I'm going to mesh combine them. I'm going to delete the history, freeze, transform, center, pivot. I'm going to select both of this. Both of these, rather. But, wow. This is all in the same block out, huh? So, file, export, selection. Uh, so, I'm going to call this uh, Hobbit Sword Tutorial FBX. But, this is that other poopy sword that I made. So, what I'm going to call it is um, Tutorial, and then I'll call this... Um, v2 so version 2 right uh let's o go over to substance painter let's load that up the cute little uh the ram guy okay oh i'm just stretching i've been here for like almost two hours i mean because i did that other tutorial the one before it i just did another one back to back because i just you know i felt bad <laughs> the, other one the other tutorial i made was not so hot but I'll put I'll probably post it up as a blooper. It has a lot of good stuff in it. A lot of stuff that um, usually goes wrong in Maya, and um, think the things you shouldn't do, I guess. But that's why I took the time to make this tutorial, which is a lot more better. Um, sorry, a lot better and a lot more efficient when it comes to making a sword for games or whatever. All right, so. Now that we have this completely UV'd and we have the model into Substance Painter, now we could go ahead and um, take a look at our model. So one thing that I noticed is that we might want to bake some textures onto it. So if we check off ID and then we just go ahead and bake textures, it'll allow, uh, it'll allow Substance Painter to introduce all sorts of ID, I mean all sorts of maps that we have here. So if we wanted to add a white uh, mask to something, um, for example, if we have... Uh, let's go to like smart materials and let's say I get something like 
Uh, yeah, so then now let's say we change the color of this. Right? Um, all right. Let's change the color to something more like, yeah, there we go. And this scale there. There we go. So now let's say we go ahead and uh, add a, a white mask to this, right? Um, so I added a white mask. Now, once I add a white mask, I can go to add generator, select a generator, for example, like that one. And it does um, all, sorts of, all sorts of cool things, like adds wear and tear and stuff. Uh, the only reason that works, though, is because I have that map that I baked out. So if you bake it out, um, it allows you to do some cool-ish uh, here, some cool stuff here. So um, you can also, you might want to, like, mess with the wear level, right? So you can mess with the wear level. You do all kinds of cool stuff here, edge smoothness. But in this case, I don't want to work with a white mask. Um actually want to just get rid of that I was just showing you guys something you could possibly do but for this I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, texture it the way I see it and kind of do it by hand just so you guys can see like what it's like doing that so let's do steel scratched and um, this already looks pretty cool but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my steel base and I'm gonna go to um, UV scale so as you can see this scales it up and then down so what I'm gonna do is scale it so it's uh, lower so there you go so what I want to do is I want to now uh, select this here and then now I want to add black mask so I want to hit 4 on my keyboard and hit UV so then I'm able to just select these UVs like this and then hit 5 so now as I as you can see I have um, that blade isolated with this layer here see how it pops up right there those are the only things that I can affect now if I wanted to create the uh, handle now and I do some sort of like bronze armor and I bring it under my steel scratch notice everything that isn't that blade will be changed in color all right so now um, I kind of like the deteriorated look I'm gonna probably just keep that but for the sake of adding more detail, I'm going to go ahead and add a steel texture. And I'm going to right click and add a black mask. But I'm going to change my alpha uh, to something cool, like maybe this. And, um, oh no, I'm not going to do that one. That's a bad one. Um, so what I was thinking is we could add some sort of, uh, like, some sort of design or something cool I guess let's do this oh yeah you gotta select your brush silly me um, let's go ahead and I mean we could just draw out our own let's go ahead and raise the hardness of that alpha and we're gonna do something here so notice when I draw out, it coats the steel um, material. So if I come here now, and let's say I go to base, and in my height, I raise the height up a bit, and I come back, notice it sticks out, right? Has that, it like, it simulates it a little, right? So um, now, that's cool because I could come here and do this. Um... I could turn on symmetry on the Z axis, yep. So now you see everything I do here gets done there. So now I could bring that brush size down and then uh, do something interesting. There you go. And then um, you could do, you know, some sort of design on it. Uh, for this to work nicely, um, let's see, let's control Y. Alright, so, uh, let's get rid of, um, L, meaning symmetry. And I'm going to select this base and I'm going to raise the height like I did, but not too much this time. 
and I'm going to get rid of my roughness detail. Uh, so then now when I go to steel, you see the effect is a lot cleaner. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and do my own design on this thing. Um, it's not going to be pleasant, but I'll just try to... You know, just do something cool like that or... You know, um, the way I do it though is I want to turn on symmetry. So it's smack down the middle. Everything I do on one side is going to go put on the other. So if I click here with my left mouse button and then after I click I hold down shift it's going to remember that location anchor it there and it's go I'm going to hold down control also so it does it in a straight line in that angle then I'm gonna let go like that then I'm gonna keep holding down shift I never let go of shift so then I'm gonna click up here and then I'm gonna click down here while still holding down shift I'm gonna hold down control because it's gonna snap and then it's going to hold down control. And then I actually don't want to hold down control. I'm going to just eye it. See? So now we got that cool design there. And let's say now we wanted to add something in here. We could go in and do something like that. Um, but in this case, I just want to leave it like that. So now what we could do is also we could add some sort of uh, design around here. Let's turn off symmetry for a second. Um, yep. There we go. All right. So now, as you can see, we have some sort of cool design there. And we have, um, I guess, that pentagram. Down here, we could, uh, I guess try to figure out some sort of design to uh, complement that center part but let's turn on uh, symmetry there so now we could come here and do this and then from there we could uh, also you don't have to click by the way um, it automatically remembers that area well I guess from where you last went so you want to click but you want to click and then just not worry too much about it now we're gonna continue our voyage all the way up like such and then we're gonna select this all the way up So we get to, I want to say right there is cool, because I'm going to follow through this way like that. So um, for this, I'm using my mouse. You'd be surprised, like sometimes doing this kind of stuff can be a lot easier with your mouse, especially since you're doing the whole shift click thing and you're used to the hockeys. But you definitely, once you get into more organic type stuff, you definitely want to start pulling out that tablet. All right, so there it is. Um, what's cool now is that I have a um, clear kind of like design that I can mess around with now, um, and maybe you know add some sort of uh, weird stuff here or whatever. If you have time, you can get crazy with it. You know, maybe just. Uh, do some sort of thing like that or I don't know whatever you decide if you want to add like a grip to this thing um, so yeah so let's go back to the like the little details right so I got the bronze armor here at the very bottom it hasn't had any black mask attached to it yet but what I might want to do is now I want to add a black mask to this so nothing else gets affected and then I hit four and um, hit UV and then now I can just drag select that thing and it keeps 
the same result, but just on, you could see just on those handles, right? Because now, since that has a black mask, I could come here and mess around with just that handle and add sort of like some detail or change the color even if I want to like change this co the color to something like that, right? Like that looks pretty rad. See what I'm saying? So that allows us to do a lot of cool stuff. So something like that would be a lot more suitable. Um, I could change the height detail, right? So that could go inward, it could go outward. So for that, I want to keep it at where it was. No, it was better. Yeah, right there. I, I like it like that. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, maybe take a look at the dirt that it has. Maybe look at the damage, the edge wear, right? Take a look at what it's doing. So now the curvature, I could mess with the curvature a little bit here. See what I'm doing? Um, let's bring that back up. Ambient occlusion. We want to maybe do some thickness here, right? So you're just adding, you're adding some sort of variation to it. Now we're hitting L, getting rid of some tree. And now if you could take a look at our sword here or our, whatever you want to call it. I think it's kind of like a machete type weapon, like a sword, but it does belong to a hobbit of some sort, but not with the pentagram. <laughs> Uh, not anymore. I went from Hobbit to <laughs> Satanic Hostel area. Um, all right, so yeah, there we go. And let's just top it all off by adding some blood and we'll be finished up. So let's go here. Maybe we could uh, do a fill layer, change the base color to something like dark-ish, um, metallic. It could be sort of like metallic-y that right some sort of moist reflective blood like thing uh the normal can be something from the material let's actually try to drag in like uh paint or actually you could just click here so like a rusty kind of gross rusted out but what we want to do is change the rust color to something blood like Something like dry blood, right? And see how it kind of has that, like, like kind of like that fresh blood kind of look. You could even scale it. Right? So once we scale it, there's cavities that we can mess with. There's, um, let's see, there's other stuff here. Oh, yeah, the normal intensity, we can mess with that. So that's good because you don't want to get too crazy with it. There you go. Um, yes, I think we're good. Now let's go ahead and right click add black mask. Let's go ahead and select something like uh, drop. Oh yeah, select the brush. I always do that. Always select the brush before you start like doing anything because then you'll realize like, oh, I wasn't even picking it. I spent like five minutes picking an alpha and it wasn't even for the for the damn brush so now leak spray could be like something crazy like that I guess um, but uh, that looks really bad uh, we might want to just not go too crazy with that kind of stuff I, I think the reason it also looks bad is because it has normals on it and height so now let's go back and as you can see it gives it see now we have more of a blood splatter effect here And then now we could rotate this by holding down control and left mouse clicking and just rotate that so there's like some sort of splatter in that direction. Like if someone were to hit someone with this, you know, it would be splattering in that direction also. Now we could do some sort of drop where it's a lot stronger there. 
but we want to make sure we lower the opacity of that drop and the hardness as well the stroke opacity and now we could do uh, a lot of neat stuff there um, this also needs to be affected somehow um, especially since like this part got it why not the other one right so um, we might want to do the drop here switch from the drop over to um, maybe grunge and now that part looks a bit more vicious than the other so that's because of the stroke opacity so now we could go ahead and uh, harden up some of the areas we feel need it okay so like maybe even here I'd suggest maybe Now we can go ahead and uh, and then now we might want to do a smudging. So this like right here could be like uh, like maybe what we could do is grab like a hand or yeah like a handprint and smudge that like this kind of like the guy's trying to protect himself before he got hurt so that's some smudging and then add a clear one here there you go all right well that pretty much sums up the tutorial I have some other stuff I got to do today I got a lot of uh, contract work. For uh, this opera that I'm working for, Permadeath, I got a lot of work I got to do for them. So this pretty much sums up the tutorial. I got to get back to work, but it was fun. I had a lot of fun making this uh, weird sort of uh, beat up hobbit wannabe sword type thing. The reason I didn't do exactly as the reference was because I wanted to give it my own little spin to it. Um right now what I'm gonna do is just keep polishing it up um, for my sake just because so, I like working on this kind of stuff but once I'm done polishing it up I'm pretty much done so right now what I'm doing is I'm just adding a black mask and um, with this I'm going to be adding some cracks uh, to the blade and scratches so like so select that um, and then, uh, so now what I could do is here with uh, a specific alpha that I pick, I can get some really cool results here. Um, I'm just trying to find the, the right one. So something like scratches like this one, right? So yeah, you can see it gives it some weird, uh, some weird results. And now what you could do is, um, you see, just add some... Uh, extruding I mean extruded uh, some detail there um, this would have a lot of deterioration since a lot of it like got hit when it was trying to kill whoever a lot of that gets um, gets destroyed in the mix so you might want to deteriorate certain areas that should be deteriorated uh, for example the tip might be a lot more worn out uh, here might be a bit worn out so yeah there you got it there you have it here it is there is the blade now let's go ahead and render it so we can finish up the video might have overdone it with the blood of course I didn't save so if it crashes that is it um, yeah so that is the end of the video <laughs> We have successfully crashed Substance Painter without saving, and it was fun while it lasted. I just wanted to say thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and subscribe. 
If you want to send me a message, you can go ahead and email me. I will provide everybody with the FBX for both the poopy sword and the good one. If you email me, uh, you can go ahead and um, follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you may want and go ahead and have a wonderful 2018 this is one of many tutorials that i will be posting and um i hope everyone has a great successful semester if you're in college and if you're not in college i hope you grind harder than the day before um go kick some ass